Being a Christian business leader is not a simple thing to do, but it is critical and important to building a company that's profitable, successful, cares about other people, and builds the kingdom of God. Here are five biblical principles that are significant in helping you become a much better Christian business leader. Principle number one, integrity and honesty. So integrity is one of those words that gets thrown around a lot in business. Of course you have to be honest. Of course you have to have integrity. It's kind of pay to play. And yet, how much true integrity is there out there in the current world? How many business leaders do you know who choose to be honest when they make a mistake? Or who never pad their invoices or stretch the truth to make themselves look better? Or blame the employees for a mistake that was theirs? Oh, I hate when that happens. Proverbs 11.3 says, the integrity of the upright guides them but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. There's a lot to be said about doing business with or working for a leader who has integrity and honesty, one who owns their crap when they fail, as we all do. Yeah, if integrity is something easy to find, why is it we all live with a bit of awe and wonder when people actually do it? Wait, are you serious? Bottom line, as a Christian, lying isn't on the table as an option. And I can guarantee you'll be uncomfortable because we cannot both lie and live in a place of peace with God. They are mutually exclusive addresses. In fact, Christian business leaders should prioritize integrity and honesty in all their dealings and everything we do, both with employees and clients. Transparent and ethical practices build trust and lead to long-term success. Our second principle here is humility. I'm pretty amazing at being humble. So Jesus tells this great story mm. in Luke. And I, I'm just going to read the story to you because it's, it's a good one. It says in Luke 4, When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this person your seat. And then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you're invited, take the lowest place, mm. so that when your host comes, He'll say to you, friend, move up to a better place, and then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. Proverbs 15 goes on to say, wisdom's instruction is to fear the Lord, but humility comes before honor. One of the things that's true about humble leaders is they're open to learning from others, mm -hmm. right? There's not just this sense of, I know everything, I don't need your help, I got this, that arrogance that comes mm -hmm. um, sometimes, especially when we're trying to protect ourselves, so what does humility look like? Humble leaders are open to learning from others, acknowledge their mistakes, and are willing to serve. Which leads us to our next point. Which is servant leadership. So Jesus taught in Mark 10, 45, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Along with a lot of other things he did, Jesus managed to turn leadership upside down. A leader who washed his followers' feet, who sent them to practice what they were learning, and rejoiced when they succeeded. Here at Half a Bubble Out, we talk a lot about creating a great working culture. And part of that is your team knowing that you care about them and their development. Servant leaders empower their team to make decisions and to take more responsibility on as they grow and learn. They help them when they mess up and remind them that mistakes are part of growing. If you're familiar with Jim Collins in Good to Great, he talks about level five leadership and level five is where instead of looking back and taking all the credit for something that goes well, you look forward out to that sort of proverbial through the room and, and check out all the people that actually helped you make that happen. And you give them the credit. The fourth is fairness and compassion. Colossians 3.12 tells us, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. But aren't leaders supposed to be tough and <laughs> hold everyone accountable and care about profit and be like rah, rah, rah. A, B, C. A, always B, B, C, closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. Look, I spent eight years in our local Rotary Club and learned Rotary's four-way test is what we've called it. Are the things we think, say, and do. The first is, is it the truth? The second is, is it fair to all concerned? The third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Rotary didn't make this up for themselves. They adopted it in 1943 from a guy named Herbert J. Taylor, who was an American business executive, who created the test to help rescue his company from the brink of bankruptcy. 
You might not be surprised to learn that Herbert was a strong Christian. He co-founded the Christian Workers Foundation. He served on boards of leading Christian institutions, including InterVarsity Christian Fellowship, Youth for Christ, Young Life, Fuller Seminary. One of the things important to understand about that four-way test is that it actually was proprietary information that helped save his company. In the beginning, it was something that he and his leaders ran throughout their thousand employee company and actually integrated to accelerate them out of debt and accelerate them out of loss and into profit and made their company more viable, thriving, and, and actually successful and able to survive. And it was because of something like that that you can see Christian leaders should treat their employees and customers with that kind of fairness, that kind of respect and compassion, recognizing that they are ultimately serving God in their business endeavors. And when you do these things, something like the four-way test and these principles are actually strategic ways to run your business so that you can have a more profitable, thriving company. Which leads us to five, if you've got that kind of company, we lead into stewardship and generosity. So in Luke chapter 12, Jesus teaches, from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. For one who's been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. So Christian business leaders have to view their resources. We have to view our resources and influence as our stewardship from God and use our wealth and influence to make the community and the world that we live in a better place. And there's a number of ways that we can do that. You can do it through tithing, giving of time and resources, blessing others. One of our favorite stories in Half a Bubble Out lore <laughs> is way back when, this was probably 2005 or six, a businessman here in town who really had a, a great walk with Jesus, full of integrity, was absolutely living out all of these principles. And we were in a, an early stage of our business. We were struggling a little bit. We were in a prayer group with him. And he and his, um, for the president of his company got together and they just decided to give us a check for a thousand dollars and and basically i just remember him saying we're not exactly sure what you're going to do for us but we would like to hire you and that thousand dollar check encouraged us in a really dark time and it also then launched us into serving that company who we still serve to this day and if you look at these biblical principles this integrity and honesty humility servant leadership fairness and compassion, and then stewardship and generosity, those things can radically impact your business to thrive so that you can impact other people's lives in a positive way and build the kingdom and grow financially. And those three things alone are powerful tools.